Atana Dharma. The speaker is Guru <coughs> Subramaniam, it is <coughs> Sundaration Subramanian. Subramanian is a very eminent environmental scientist uh, <coughs> from ESCA, but he is of international repute and having his own consulting firms and doing consulting all around the world. He is a globe toddler, and we are lucky to have him here now in Los Angeles, but he is settled in Chicago, but all the time he is traveling. But today he's in Los Angeles and he agreed to do a presentation on the subjects. You know, he's a versatile researcher on the aspects of Hinduism, you see. And particularly he's interested in addressing to the youngsters, young adults, anybody from 25 years to probably 14, 15, like that. And again, Mrs. Vidya Subramaniam, he, she is joining him. He is also an engineer in the sense that she is a homemaker and she has raised three beautiful kids of professionals and they are well settled in their life you know, around this country. And she has been participating with the Subramaniam in a lot of satsangis. You know, he is a Devi worshipper and they have been conducting a lot of one, what you called the bhajans in a sampradaya bhajans. Sampradaya means it's a kind of a traditional uh, bhajan style, style developed in southern parts of India and very popular, you know. And he had been doing with uh, another lady uh, the sampradaya bhajans uh, all around the country, you know. Uh, with that, I'll hand over my mic to uh, Professor Subramanya and Vidya. Thank you. Thank you, Sambat. Namaste to all. First of all, I must thank the Kalibari Temple Management, and in particular, my good friend, Sri Sampat Ayengar, for providing me this great opportunity to share some of my thoughts on the online lecture related to the essentials of Sanatana Dharma. This is a very auspicious month, as most of you know. It's called Margasirsha. In Sanskrit, Marga means way and sirsha is head and the best. So this is the best month and the best way to realize oneself. It's a very auspicious month also called as Margari in Tamil and Dhanur Masam. This is the ninth month in the Hindu calendar and it provides stability in one's thoughts, pursuing many things like sadhana, vrata, bhajan, puja, all for one's own spiritual growth. Today is the fifth day of this holy month. So we'd like to first start with a jhana slogan and then a, a song from the Tirupavai which will be sung by my Dharma Patni, Vidya Subramanyam. So let's start with this Dhyana Slogam. Om Gajananam Bhuta Ganati Sevitam Kavika Jambu Palasara Bhakshitam Umasutam Choka Vinasa Karanam Namami Vigneshwara Pada Pankajam Gurur Brahma, Gurur Vishnu, Gurur Devo Bhageshwaraha Guru Sarchat Parabrahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Sadhashiva Samaram Bam Sankara Charya Madhyamam Asmat Acharya Pajyantam Vande Guru Paramparam Now I'll 
request Srimati Vidya to sing the Tirupava song, which is appropriate to the fifth day. This is a month for music, dance, all fine arts. This is a season for rejoice. It's also a season for rejoicing. Joining in the holiday season here in the United States, and everybody has a good mood. They all want to enjoy this season. Christmas coming and the new year is coming. And therefore, it's most appropriate to begin this lecture series on the essentials of Sanatana Dharma. I would like to provide you in today's session one, a quick overview of what is Sanatana Dharma and some of the highlights. A knowledge of Sanskrit uh, is very helpful to understand the lectures on Sanatana Dharma. I must confess it is very difficult to provide exact translations of some of the Sanskrit words in English. However, I'll try to do my best. So let's uh, begin at the very beginning and let's understand what is Sanatana Dharma? We've all heard this word in many places, but I think we should understand what is it? Is it a religion or is it a philosophy or is it something else? No, Sanatana Dharma is really a view of life. It's not based on the vision of any single individual. The words Sanatana Dharma, they come from the ancient Sanskrit language, Sanatana, which denotes that which does not cease to be or that which is eternal. It is continuous. The word Dharma, on the other hand, is a term that is only properly rendered into the English language with a bit of difficulty. This is the case because the word dharma is not describing an object, but rather a profound philosophical concept. We can say the approximate meaning to it is natural law or the natural way you can say or those principles of reality which are inherent in the very nature and design of the universe itself so this term sanatana dharma can be roughly translated to mean the eternal natural way. It is rooted 
in the experience of ancient sages in India and dharma, natural law, is universal. It is eternal. Dharma is nothing less than the Almighty's laws as they are manifest in the natural world around us. There is a law governing the behavior of everything in this world. All must submit to it for the world to function properly. Physics, chemistry have all shown certain definite laws. They don't change. The composition of water remains same, whether it is in the United States or in India or elsewhere. Therefore, the natural laws function in a particular manner which are decided and they cannot be altered. If they do, other things, otherwise the things will go awry and you end up in chaos. It's a will of the Lord that all his creation, all his creatures should live in harmony and happiness. That is why he has ordained a dharma, what I call a law, for each one of them. It is in compliance with this dharma that ensures all round harmony to everyone. And that is how the whole universe operates according to certain laws. So Sanatana Dharma is referring to those natural principles and ways of being that are in concert with the Absolute. It's a direct reflection of God's will in this world. Such principles, therefore axiomatic, are not alterable laws of the cosmos. Therefore, the term Sanatana Dharma is not referring to something that is open to alteration or modifications or speculations or human manipulations. It is following certain natural laws eternally. So that is what is Sanatana Dharma. Going further, is it a religion? Well, it's a nameless religion, you can say. There are many, many religions in the world. Each has a separate name to distinguish it from others. All these names are really personal uh, and are derived from the founders of the respective faiths. For example, Buddhism takes its name from its founder Lord Buddha, Jainism from Mahavi Jain, Mohammedism from Muhammad the Prophet, Christianity from Jesus Christ, Zoroastrianism from its founder Zoroaster, and even Chinese religion, you can say it is Confucianism, and the founder of it and the propounder is Confucius. All these founders of religions have been great men who had the power to attract and pull people towards their principles, to their way of thinking. Thus, every religion, therefore, has a distinctive name on its, of its own, on the lines I have described. But who is the founder of Sanatana Dharma? If you ask anyone about the founder, he may not be able to answer it because Sanatana Dharma is nameless. It is called Anadi, having no definite origin. There was really no need for a name as it was widespread all over at one time and there was no need to distinguish it from any other until other religions came. And when the foreigners came into contact with the India, they coined a name for it. What is that name? The other name for Sanatan Dharma, the most popular one is Hinduism. 
It was not a name of the religion in the distant past. This name is not there in our Shastras. You can't find this word Hinduism anywhere. Then how did this name come? Now, this probably is historical. Most likely that it came because our forefathers were once the inhabitants of the region watered by the river Sindhu, what is called the modern Indus. So some foreigners who came into contact with India named the people as Hindus who followed a way of life called Hinduism. So in my lecture, I will be using both these words, Sanatan Dharma or Hinduism, both referring to the same way of life. This is uh, more popular because people uh, have, have known it for some centuries now, and Hinduism is known as a religion all around the globe. But the original name for it is Sanatana Dharma. Now, every religion has a holy book. Like you have uh, the Holy Bible for Christians, the Holy Quran for Muslims, the Jewish sacred text called Tanakh, or the Hebrew Bible for the Jews, Zendavasta, the sacred book of Zoroastrians or Parsis. So what is the holy book of Hinduism? One might say there are many holy books. At least many have heard about Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharatam, and so on. But these may not find acceptance in all sects of Hinduism, the divisions. Some of them may not be very well known, but there must be a core book. The book which is one single holy scripture, which is adopted by all Hindus. And that is called the Holy Vedas. And the Vedas form the core of Sanatana Dharma. And it is from the Vedas that many things have derived as principles of Sanatana Dharma. The word Veda itself comes from the Sanskrit root with to know and Vedas in knowledge. So, really speaking, knowledge is the core holy book for Hinduism. Going further, what is the core belief of Sanatana Dharma? What does it believe in and what are the main pillars on it? The core belief is the very soul of Sanatana Dharma is its universality, applicable anywhere to anyone. Hinduism believes in that, that the infinite, or what he called the supreme being, permeates the whole world. Sarvam Brimpa Mayam Jagat, as they call it. It is prevalent all over the world, irrespective of geographical territory or irrespective of, of whatever affiliation you have. It considers all activities of life as offerings to the Supreme. It is something which has a very strong conviction on this principle that it is prevalent all over. And that is one of the core uh, beliefs. Going further, what is the principle of Sanatana Dharma? Dharma is a term which is used frequently in the ancient scriptures to denote all the moral and religious principles that constitute the means to obtain a fullness of life. The pursuit of dharma is the first meant for happiness. There are four stages, they put it. 
धर्मार्थ खाव मोक्षम धर्मा इज अ फर्स्ट वन अर्थ इज अ प्रोफेशन और अ करियर विच यू शुड फॉलो kama is desire it doesn't prohibit you from fulfilling your desires but ultimately it has to lead to moksha or the final destination of the home so the pursuit of dharma is first for happiness human happiness and well being not just human happiness it is happiness of all living beings and that is illustrated i am going to recite a small verse from a vedic prayer of purusha suktam from rigveda om tacham yora vridi mage gatum yajnaya gatum yajna pataye daive swasthirasthunaha swasthir manushebhyah udvam jigatu beshajam sanno astu dipate संचतुष्पते ओम शांति 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 हे सो दिस इज अ ब्यूटीफुल प्रेयर इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल वर्स व्हिच रिफ्लेक्ट्स द कोर प्रिंसिपल ऑफ सनातन धर्म व्हाट इट बिलीव्स इन एवरीबॉडी बीइंग हैप्पी तत्तम जोरा वृणी महे we worship and pray that tatcham is that that supreme lord for the welfare of all beings gatum yajnaya we sing the glory of holy sacrifices yajna means sacrifice they do many sacrifices in the fire as a god a transmitter so we sing the glory gatum is singing of the holy sacrifices gatum yajna pataye we sing the glory of the lord pataye means lord of the sacrifices daivi swasthirasthunaha let the celestials be happy and healthy swasthir manushebhyah manushebhyah bad the word manusha it refers to man you see a similarity between manusha and man both start with m manushebhyah let the human beings we all be happy and healthy and well urdham jigadu beshajam urdham means up going up jigad ubeshajam beshajam refers to medicinal plants let all medicinal herbs grow in potency and go up sando astu dipate let the two legged dipate means two legs let the two leg creatures be happy obviously referring to all human beings and then next line sanchatushpate me all the four legged ones which refers to animals let them be also be happy om shanti 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 hi let there be peace in the hearts of all beings in all realms you see this is a simple prayer there are of course hundreds of them but i am just giving you one single example which is reflective of the basic principle of sanatan dharma which believes that everyone should be happy it is for happiness of not only human being but all creatures it wants everybody to be healthy with medicinal herbs also to grow up medicines are required anyway there will be some diseases and medicines are required so let there be medicine herbs going up and we owe everything to the yajna pataye to that it doesn't say by name we don't know that almighty tatsham means that almighty so we are praying to that almighty to keep everybody healthy and happy in this world and we pray for peace peace and peace 
three times, not just once, but three times repeated to lay emphasis on the word peace. So that is something which is reflective of what is Sanatana Dharma. The ultimate goal is all living beings should be happy. That is the goal of Sanatana Dharma. You have uh, analogy. It's like a mother. A mother cares for all her children, irrespective of whether one child is bright or dull, or one child is physically strong, or another is weak. No matter how the children are, the mother cares for all her children. It is true not only in the human beings, but also in the animal kingdom. Cats, dogs, you take any animal, the protective instinct of mother is seen there with all her kids. You can see examples of that when you see the animals also, all the young ones, including birds. How the young birds get their food from their mother thrust into their mouth. The mother goes around and then picks up and gives them the food. So Sanatana Dharma is something like that, like a mother caring for all her children. Now it respects the five elements, Pancha Bhutam as they call it. So that is around us everywhere. We can't live without it. It respects the environment since ancient times. Unfortunately, forgotten in present days in some places. So the mother nature is worship. You go to India today, you can see that in evidence. There are trees worshipped. There are stones worshipped. The rivers are worshipped. Fire is worshipped. Mother Earth is worshipped. I could see it more in the rural areas than in the cities. Two years back when we were there, the river started flowing, Kaveri. And I could see many villages going on to the riverbed and prostrating before the water is coming from the river. It shows basically they are worshipping the river. Water is lifeline. So that's one part. But the ma like a mother, it does not ignore the other people who are atheists, who don't believe in God, the agnostics, even blasphemers are not punished because there is a chance for them to redeem themselves. Like you go into a prison, we call it correctional facility in this country, correct? So it gives a chance for a prisoner to correct himself. Exactly, same way Sanatana Dharma gives a chance to people who don't believe in it to have a chance of redeeming themselves. This is a unique thing about the Hinduism. It's a comprehensive system which incorporates in itself all aspects of human life, philosophy, religion, ethics, all facets of culture, including arts, science, and literature. They are all closely interwoven with Sanatana Dharma. If you ever to go and see some of these temples in India, you see how the sculpture has woven many things related to life on stone. Animal life, human life, bird life, matters connected with nature, all these are interwoven exquisitely on stone and all they used were just only chisel and hammer. That is how they built it up. And it is remarkable to see that. And this is something which one should see to understand how glorious is Sanatana Dharma. It's all over India. And not only within India, it has spread into other countries like Thailand, Indonesia. You see evidence of that, where these temples are built up. 
with the theme coming from Sanatana Dharma. Remarkable, isn't it? Okay, that being said, Hinduism accepts the existence of God and positions me as kind of final goal in our life, the moksha. It offers paths, many paths before us of different types and temperaments, but all of them lead ultimately to the same Almighty. There is an analogy which is given when you go, let's say you arrive at a, an airport and you have to go home, you can either take a taxi or somebody can come in the car and pick you up or you can take a shuttle or you can take a, a local train. Ultimately, the destination is your home, but each one takes a different path. Likewise, Hinduism offers different paths, all ultimately leading to the same Almighty. So this is on the philosophical side, but on the lighter side, it provides us tremendous personal and emotional satisfaction through various performances, through various rituals and many festivals and celebrations and so on to keep people happy and united together. If you watch some of the festivals, irrespective of caste or creed, irrespective of material wealth, a rich man or a poor man, it doesn't matter. Young or old, it does not matter. They pull a chariot together. A chariot which is heavy, which is drawn by rope. And this is found in People must have seen the Rath Yatra of very famous of Bhuvaneshwar, Jagannath. Likewise, in South India, there are many temples where there is this car festival and huge wooden structures with wheels weighing many tons on which you have an idol of an Almighty and they pull it together unmindful of the differences between them. This is unity in diversity. That is something related to Sanatana Dharma. It has been there going on for thousands of years. Nothing new about it. So this uh, religion is something unique. I am going to tell you more about it in the upcoming lectures. Uh, this is just as I told you. A very quick overview of what is Sanatana Dharma. But in the upcoming series, which will be every Saturday at the same time, I will provide you more details about the uniqueness. Why Sanatana Dharma is something unique? And what is so special about it? How does it lead you to happiness? How does it really make you a better manager of yourself? It teaches you how to be honest with yourself. Once you become honest with yourself, then you find happiness coming to you automatically. As I told you, the goal is ultimately everybody should be happy. And how to reach that stage is what is taught in detail. Ultimately, it is the mind over matter and it is a mind which is influenced by various teachings. There is a Guru Parampara which has been going on for thousands of years and this religion of Sanatana Dharma is still strong because of the devotion displayed by these gurus. There's so many of them, hundreds of them who have been telling people the basics of Sanatana Dharma, how to live, the methodology, how to be at peace with yourself. Everyone is seeking happiness, something 
material happiness, uh, well, I will have car, a big house, a mansion, a position, and so on. But experience has shown this is ultimately not giving you 100% happiness. You become vice president, then you want to become a president. If you become a president, you want to become a, a chairman, and so on. There is no stoppage. It goes on and multiplying. But Sanatana Dharma teaches you, whatever be you are, in whichever position of life you are in, it teaches you how to be in peace with yourself. And once that is achieved, then you can achieve anything. So it strengthens your mind like a rock. It helps you to manage yourself. And once you know how to manage yourself, you can manage others. The human interactions become very effective. It teaches you many such things. So it's a lesson for us, Sanatana Dharma. And above all, it is not just only for you. It is not for one single individual. It is for the entire globe. Universality. That is the greatness of Sanatana Dharma. And I want to really conclude this presentation today with a beautiful prayer song. It is in Sanskrit, composed by one of the greatest gurus of the present time, the Kanchi Mahaparivasi called the 68 Sankaracharya of Kanchi Kamukuti Pitam. And this song, I like Mr. Vidya Subramaniam to sing this song. Maitri Mbhajata Akila Hrajetri Maitri Mbhajata Akila Hrajetri Maitri Mbhajata Akila Hrajetri Atma Gavadeva Paranati Pashyata This is a very beautiful song. If I explain you the meaning, you will know how nice and how meaningful is Sanatana Dharma. Maitrim Bajata Akilaga Jetrim Atma Deva Paranapi Paschata 
ஆத்மனேவ பராணபிப்பு லுக் அபான் அதர்ஸ் ஜஸ்ட் அஸ் டு யுவர் செல் தெர் இஸ் சேயிங் இன் இங்கிலீஷ் இஃப் யூ வேர் இன் அதர் ஷூஸ் இட் இஸ் சம்திங் லைக் தட் லுக் அபான் அதர்ஸ் அஸ் இஃப் யுவர் செல் இஃப் சம்படி இஸ் சஃபரிங் ஜஸ்ட் இமேஜின் இஃப் யூ வேர் இன் தட் பொசிஷன் ஹவு யூ வில் பி Yudham Tejatha, renounce war, renounce fighting. You know, we have so many quarrels and so many infighting going on. It disturbs the mental peace, it disturbs community. Renounce those things. Spardham Tejatha. Tejatha means to reject, to take it out, renounce. unnecessary competition for power they call it rat race right rat race is meant for rats not for human beings and rat race ruins everything you is not i'm suggesting that you are not uh, uh, should not progress progress is essential but being in the rat race and unnecessary competition for power jealousy greed all these come in ruin your peace tajata pareshwa akrama kramanam give up aggression on other properties which is wrong wrong aggression should be avoided rightful aggression is okay but wrongful aggression is not right janani prithivi i told you that sanatana dharma respects mother earth this is an example janani prithivi means earth this is the mother earth janani is the mother earth khamatu khaste it is wide enough it is wide enough to give you whatever you want like the tree kamadenu like the cow kamadenu kamadenu this is celestial cow which is giving you boundless there is no limit to giving so kamadenu kamadu khaste like kamadenu the mother earth is wide enough to provide everybody whatever you want like mahatma gandhi said there is everything for one's need but not for not enough for for greed so if there is enough the mother earth can give you why should you get worried janako devaha sakha sakala dayalu god our father he is very compassionate to all dham yatha to strain yourself datta dayatvam janataha be kind to others particularly now in this pandemic situation there are millions of people who are suffering be kind to them oh people janata means people people of the world sreyo bhuyat sakala jananam this is the core belief of sanatan dharma may people of entire world bhuyat sreyo let the people of the world be happy and prosperous the universal i stress it again it is for universal happiness loka samasta sukhino bhavantu says one proverb all people in the world should be happy it is not excluding anybody they could be from any faith any part of the world of any social status sanatana dharma does not exclude them it is wishing well for everyone so more on this as we go on this is just to give you a very quick uh, overview of what is sanatana dharma what is its core belief why it was nameless and how it came to be called as hinduism and how does it look upon the peoples of earth 
as a mother would take care of her children, it's just like a mother. So with this, we bring this session one to a conclusion. I wish you all a very happy holidays, upcoming. Rejoice yourself in this month of Dhanur Masam. Every day we have prayers and singing, and it's a merry time. I'd like to thank Ampatayinga for coordinating this program today. Thank you very much. Until we meet next week. Namaste to everybody. Thanks a lot, you know, both Subramaniam and Vidya. Excellent uh, teamwork, you know, wonderful it is. You have laid the foundation of this great, you know, Sanatana Dharma, I think. I'm sure you'll be building it by stone by stone, you know, as in the ensuing lectures. I think it will be kind of a ram and there being built in Allahabad, you know, that one, uh, Ayodhya. That's what it's going to be, you know. What you have seen is only just the foundation stones being laid, you know. Yeah. That self is so strong and well founded. On that, we are going to build the edifice of a palatial Sanatana Dharma palace. And with yeah. that, I conclude. And please look forward for ongoing lectures of Mr. Subramaniam and then Vidya uh, for the, uh, the coming every Saturday, you know. We'll keep you informed, you know. We will post it in the Facebook uh, yes. brochure and uh, uh, be ready to join us. You know. Thanks a lot and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you again. Namaste to everybody. Lord.